As we navigate this crisis that is arising from the coronavirus, we must keep three key mandates in mind in order to navigate our response correctly. The first mandate is that we need to be firm on our freedoms. The Bible says in Psalm 127, except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. What that means is that any viable attempt at securing our national defense is rooted in being able to secure God's blessing over our nation. We can only be as safe as we are godly. So what that means is that in a time of crisis, we need to draw closer to God not further away. That's why it's absolutely unconscionable that elected officials would even consider executive orders which would in any way curtail attending church services or being able to worship God in a gathered assembly. Therefore, I believe that what we need to do is leave that decision to the pastor and his congregation. Leave that decision between them and God. If the pastor wants to come up with a policy during this time of saying no more than two to a pew or we're going to do online services, let that be at the church's discretion. But it is not within the state's purview to mandate that upon a church on penalty of incarceration or fines or anything of the like. The First Amendment enshrines our right to freedom of religion. And the purpose of the Bill of Rights is to recognize rights that God had already given us, not to give us our rights. Our rights come from God, not from the government. A Bill of Rights that is negotiable under any circumstance is simply a Bill of Suggestions, and that is antithetical to our foundation as a nation. So we need to let that decision be between the pastor, the congregation, and God, because a virtual church service, though an interesting idea, is not foolproof. There could be failures with the technology, or worse yet, there could be deliberate interference or censorship if the powers that be would disagree with any of the content that is preached within that online sermon. So we cannot look at online church as a 100% irreplaceable, irrefutable replacement for in-person church. Because the Bible says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhort one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. That is the Bible declaring our right as Christians to gather in his name and serve him. Now, here's the thing. Our second mandate is that we need to be practical in our preaching. This mandate is upon the pastors of this land at this time. There are a lot of pastors out there who are unfortunately selling their congregations false hope. They will say things such as, if you believe hard enough, you won't get sick. Or if you are a good Christian, you don't have to worry about it. They basically sell their congregants complacency rather than responsibility. And that is irresponsible behavior from a pastor. If you are a pastor and you are telling your congregation that if they just believe they won't get sick, well, you need to go back and reread your Bible because there have been times in scripture where God allowed his children, his faithful, his saints to get sick. Consider the case of Job. Job was a just man that feared the Lord and eschewed evil, yet God allowed him for a time to get sick. He had boils in his skin. How about Epaphroditus, who was in the book of Philippians? He was a hard-working Christian for God, but he still got sick and almost died from it. Our Bible clearly declares that God loved Lazarus, yet God allowed Lazarus to get so sick that he ended up dying. So it is irresponsible as a Christian, as a pastor, for you to tell your church that they don't have to worry about getting sick. It is possible that they will get sick. It's how we respond to the sickness. Because the Bible says, is any afflicted among you, let him pray. Sometimes God allows hard times in our life so that we may remember our need for him and draw closer to him. However, that is not all the Bible teaches when it comes to sickness. If you read Leviticus chapter 14 and Leviticus chapter 15, the Bible clearly teaches sanitation, 
washing with running water, and where necessary, self-quarantine. That is what the Bible talks about when it talks about purification and separation. So we need to make sure that we are very clear on those principles as well. Pastors need to be teaching their congregation about sanitation, about self-quarantine when necessary, and about serving God and praying and drawing closer to him. Our nation is in need of more God not less God, which brings me to the final mandate. That is that we need to be consistent with our compassion. So remember, the first mandate is that we need it to be firm on our freedom. The second mandate, that preachers need to be practical in their preaching. And the third mandate, we need to be consistent on our compassion. And this point is short. Simply this, every time you read a news article about the coronavirus and how many new cases have risen in your state, there's a natural tendency to worry. Worse yet, every time you see a headline of how many fatalities from the coronavirus in your state, there's a natural instinct to worry about it. And that is good. What that means is you understand the gravity and the humanity of this situation. However, we must extrapolate that to its logical conclusion. If we are going to worry about how many people are getting sick and how many are dying, when are we going to start worrying about how many unborn children are murdered in their mother's womb? That number is to the tune of 3,000 a day and a million a year, absolutely eclipsing any fatalities from the coronavirus. So if we're going to be against the unnecessary, untimely loss of human life, let's be consistent with that approach and value all human life that matters. That is the message. We need to be firm on our freedom. We need to be practical in our preaching and consistent with our compassion. Compassion for the old and for the young, including the unborn. Because a nation is only as safe as it is godly. Because again, the Bible says, except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. Thank you and God bless.